Hi, I'm Arlen Walker, and I'm live from Pelham's Wasteland, and today I have got another episode of March Character Creation Mayhem for you guys. This time we are using the game Punk Apocalyptic by Robert J. Schwab. Um, you guys may recognize the, the name um, from a number of different things. Um, in particular, I know he was involved in... Um, some of the earlier versions of Dungeons and Dragons, and then made his own game called Shadow the Demon Lord um, that is great and that I've played a fair bit of and is, is totally worth checking out. Punk Apocalyptic is sort of a further expansion on Shadow the Demon Lord for a post-apocalyptic game. Um, it is also very much Shadow the Demon Lord as well, but Punk Apocalyptic in particular is very much a uh, game for adults, I will say. There's, um, you know, foul language and, and blood and gore and all that sort of stuff. It's really not designed for uh, children. Um, anyway, so that's that's the, the thing to bear in mind for right now. And then I'm also going to have to, I just realized I'm going to need to do some rolling for the character creation so i'm going to open up a roll 20 that i can roll in um, but anyway here we have the character sheet for punk apocalyptic i couldn't find a form fillable sheet anywhere unfortunately um, so this is what we've got and i'm just going to essentially use the typewriter function in foxit reader to write down stuff um, I haven't decided if we are going to create a essentially a zero level character or a first level character. Um, it works a little bit differently because it uses uh, missions in this game to add paths, but um, it's it's similar to Shadow the Demon Lord, where as you advance through a character, you start with you know basically just your character's thing, and then they add a novice path, and then an expert path, and then eventually a master path for their three kind of class elements as they would be in a um, more uh, D&D-ish game. So anyway, I need to also open up the rule book and look through how we make a character. So the first thing we need to do is do some attributes. Um, <laughs> and we can do assign scores or random scores. Uh, I think we will do assign scores or no random scores because that's more fun. So what it is is a table where you roll three d no you roll four d six dropping the lowest eight times once for each of these eight attributes and then you assign the things and you basically use the um, difference from ten as the the modifier right so a score of ten is a zero modifier. Uh, a score of 13 is a plus three, that sort of thing, right? Straightforward enough, and we will get into that. So slash R 46 DL1. That gives us an 11, which is actually a 10. So that's a plus zero. And then a 15, a 12, a 14, a 16, a 13, so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one more. All right, so we have got um, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight of these. So we need to figure out what these do. So the 16s are 12s. So let's go through back to here. So we've got two, we got an 18 and two 16. So that's a 13, 12, 12. And then we have got, so that's do, 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 13, 12, 12, 11, 11, 10, 10, 6, 7. We've got, I'm missing one. Which one am I missing? I'm missing another 11. for our attributes and then our background is going to give us a plus one in something so i'm going to go ahead and pick that um, and i am going to choose hmm scavenger looks good but i think brute is what we want to be because the brute looks cool um the brute will give us an increase to our muscle score 
by one. So I'm going to put our big 14 in muscles. And the sheet is reloading apparently because it does that sometimes. So we will put a, we will put a, plus four in muscles. We will put a plus three in meat. We will put a plus three in hands. We will put, no, we've got a plus two for hands there. We will put, oh, that should be, meat should be a plus two as well. I'm already cheating terribly. So I will put plus one for feet plus one for guts, and plus one for eyes, and then a plus zero for brains, and a plus zero for mouth. If you are familiar with Shadow of the Demon Lord, you will notice that most of these attributes are basically a, um, there are four core attributes in Shadow of the Demon Lord, and these eight are basically a division of those four each into two individual different ones. So muscles and meat basically are the two things that your strength does in Shadow Demon Lord. Hands and feet are what your agility does. Brains and eyes are what your intelligence does. And mouth and guts are what your willpower does, essentially. Which is, I think, a cool thing to notice if you want to uh, you know, convert a character between the two different systems. Anyway, um, doo -doo -doo, and now we need to open this up. So, brute. We also get one language of our choice. Um, brute. We get brawn. You push yourself to perform feats of strength when you roll muscles. Use this talent to make the roll with two assets. Once you use this talent, you may exploit six rounds before you can use it again. Brawn. Two assets on muscles. Roll once per six round. Once per six rounds. All right, and starting gear, torn and tattered clothing, a big wrench or hammer, a backpack, one food, one water, and a random piece of junk. So we are gonna do one food, one water. Um, we have a Big hammer. Um, we have a backpack. Backpack. And a random piece of junk. I guess we can roll that, I think. Um, I'm not going to worry about language stuff right now. Um, I am going to... I am going to roll my brute background. That's a 1d6 roll, so I draw 1d6. That is a one, and that gives us, we strangled someone who may or may not des have deserved it. And therefore we are unwelcome in our home community and are forced to move on to somewhere else. Um, and then at mission four, we get some other benefits for being a brute, um, much like in Shadow of the Demon Lord where your ancestry gives you specific bonuses at level four. Um, Junk. We are going to roll a 1d6 and a 1d20 to figure out what piece of junk we have. Slash r 1d6 plus 1d20. So we rolled a 6 on the 6 and a 7 on the d20. That's table 6. Item 7 is a bar napkin on which has been written a phone number. Bar napkin with phone number. Well, that's interesting. Not quite sure that's ever going to be useful, but you know, that's fun. Um, so attribute modifiers, a defense score plus half your feet plus half your eyes rounded down wearing armored clothing. So I don't know if we add them together and then divide by half or divide by half and then add them together. Um, I'm going to say that we have a defense of uh, a yeah, we're going to have a defense of a plus one right now. Um, I guess we'll call that an 11 because that's the target number instead of a plus one. A health score 
starting health equals your meat score. So that is going to be a 12. We have grit points equal to three plus your guts modifier. So we have four out of four grit. Education. Have an amount of education equal to your brain's attribute modifier. For each point of education, you can choose a language or a something you know. So that is going to be no education. So we just have our one language. Um, I'm going to put that under stuff. Languages common. We'll just call it common because that's pretty easy. And then what else do we get? What else do we get? PDF right here. Move on for me. We have a speed score equals half your feet rounded down. Um, so I guess our speed. Oh, well, yeah. So our speed is going to be a five because our feet is an 11. Um, size and reach. We have your size is one. And therefore, um, reach, I'm just going to say normal mutagen score. Oh, we get to roll to see if we start with any mutagen stuff. So 1d6 is a 2. So we are... Uh, yeah, we get our mutagen score of two. So as we go around doing stuff, we will uh, get that sort of stuff. Character details. There's a whole bunch of random tables for our um, physical and social and sanity and goal and motivations and obligations and morality and names and all sorts of stuff. Um, we're not going to use all of that just because I don't necessarily want to do all of that. Um, we are going to give ourselves essentially the level one benefit. Um, so our novice path is going to be killer, which is sort of the warrior type. Um, all right, our health at first increases by five up to 17. Forceful strike. When you attack with a weapon and the total of your roll is 20 or higher, the attack deals 1d6 extra damage. Force, forceful strike on an attack total of 20 or higher. 20 or more. You heal on extra 1d6 damage and then we also get weapon training weapon training rolls with one asset when you attack with a weapon one three asset when attacking when attacking with a weapon. All right. Um, doo -doo -doo. I guess we will need to see what sort of equipment we might get. Let me see. Let me see. Doing stuff. All of this. All of this. All of this. Close, close, close. Commodities. Items. Excellent. What sort of items might we want? Um, <laughs> our starting weapon was a big hammer or wrench, which does 1d6. Um, I don't know if we can buy any of if we can necessarily afford any of these things. So we will say that we have our, let's say we're gonna get a machete also. And that does 1d6 plus two. 1D6. 
And then the hammer also has a five prone, so we can throw the hammer. And then we might want some armor too. What sort of stuff might we get? <laughs> Light armor, armor, replacing the defense score. Either increasing your defense score or replacing your defense score with another number while you wear it. Hmm. I don't think we can afford any armor. Um, so we're just going to have, uh, yeah. Ragged clothing. The armor is more expensive. So I think we spent everything on our machete. Um, doo -doo -doo. And then what else might we need? I think that is, I guess if we went through stuff, we would do all of the bullets, medicine, power, fuel, and missions. Um, but I think that is just about everything. So now we need a name. So um, what is our name going to be? Canic the Killer. Yeah, Canic the Killer. That's our mutant warrior, our killer for punk apocalyptic. He's a big, bad dude. He's big and muscular, and he's got a machete, and he smacks people with it, and that's his thing. Um, yeah, that's going to be it. That's going to be the whole thing for this character creation, this uh, episode of March Character Creation Mayhem. Um, pretty straightforward, much like Shadow the Demon Lord, right? Um, Punk Apocalyptic has very, very straightforward character creation and a lot of really flavorful tables that you can use to add stuff to the, the kind of flavor of your character, figure out kind of like, you know, you have some sort of like weird piece of equipment that happened to be in your pocket that is, you know, telling for the character's past or things like that, very much like Shadow the Demon Lord. Um, and then obviously also the, the novice expert and master path system adds some really cool stuff that you can use to um, blend things together and create your particular combination of abilities that you think is what you want your character to be able to do at um, essentially the equivalent of level one, which is where Kanik is at right now. You don't have nearly as many cool things that you can do, but obviously as you kind of grow in power and add an expert and then eventually a master path, um, characters will end up with some really wild things that they can do and some, you know, high tier equipment and all that sort of stuff. So anyway, all of that is to say that, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's the whole thing. That's all I got for this one, Punk Apocalyptic. It's a really interesting game. I wish there were a Roll20 character sheet for it, but I, um, I don't know. It's, it, it, I think it's totally playable without it, especially with the um, relative kind of simplicity of the die rolling system from the, the Shadow of the Demon Lord um, concepts, right? It's, it's a very straightforward system, the target number 10 for most things and all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's a really cool game and um i'm you know i'm definitely gonna have to think about doing some more with this particular game so anyway all of that is to say that um yeah i am i'm done with creating kinnick the killer and therefore i have been arlen walker i have been live from pelham's wasteland and i will see you next time take care everybody <laughs>